Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's second video. So day 10 will take us to the 3rd of August and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with Accenture Affairs and ECM Ensembles. Maybe it's around a couple of weeks. Of course, have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. Gets us into the second half of August now. And I'll get on with that for you in a moment. Just say that first, a video set was our 6 UK weather forecast. Please like, share, and subscribe on both of today's bids. And uh, thank you so much for doing that for Gals Web Bids, everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, right, let's start off with the latest wind map from EarthNoSchool.net. Showing that uh, we've got uh, a rich building just out to the west of the country and uh, then low pressure in the Atlantic. So we've got an area of low pressure up towards Greenland and Iceland, then a weather system through there. We've got a transient ridge through here and then another low over there. And that's bringing in a north northeast down the east side, putting in a lot of cloud and uh, a few showers as well. Western areas getting the best of today's dry and bright weather. Centering temperature is sitting at 18.7, about 2.7 degrees above 61 to 90 average, and that is provisional to the 22nd of July. As I said yesterday, it'll be interesting whether that stays in the 18th. I think it's going to be touch and go, but we may just about do it and pull off. Uh, we may just about do it and pull off an 18 Celsius at CT a uh, month. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. The next couple of weeks are at Bristol today. The red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Bristol. So starting off about average at the moment, you can see a little tick up in the next couple of days. And then we're coming back down into the weekend start so next week. Then we'll lift up again, then we're coming back down again. All looking rather zonal, but we do see a warming trend within the GFS operational and control runs anyway as we move on. Into from the first week into the second week of August. See how those big green and thick blue lines are lifting up there. Oh, maybe some are not done yet. Although it has to be said, there's a lot of scatter within the GFS ensembles for that period. So we've got cooler on some of them down here, warmer on some of them down here. But could we be facing our next spell of hot weather, possibly from the first week into the second week of August? We'll see. Precipitation wise, well, could be quite a lot of dry weather to be honest over the next couple of weeks. Yes, there are some precipitation spikes there, as you'd expect, not that many of them. So, overall, we're going to keep high pressure very close to the southwest of the country. And uh, particularly for western southern areas, I think there will be quite a lot of dry weather. Temperature normally is next five days, the 29th of July, about average, not a particularly big deviation, 10 to 14 day. Also, about average, that's been the GFS ensembles course. If that was limited to the operational run, that would look a lot warmer. And the precipitation uh, anomaly is like seven days. They can be out substantially drier than normal, so the dry spell continues uh, and maybe strengthens a little bit. And in the 8 to 14 day, again, that's coming out drier than average as well. Okay, let's start going through the all important chart data then. We have the latest UK bet. Europe right? it's looking midnight on Sunday. High pressure to the southwest, low pressure to the northwest, and bring in a westerly flow. That high pressure strengthens to the southwest as we move on to the course of next week. So we're going to see a lot of dry weather down in the south next week. Pleasantly warm, not a heat wave. We're not drawing up the air from Spain, Africa. And what not. So we're talking about what not. So about uh, temperatures uh, between below to mid twenties Celsius there. Um, you know, probably relatively pleasant temperatures at night as well. Or it's a little bit more unsettled though for Scotland and Northern Ireland with a few showery bursts. And then we've got Icon looking like this. Again, strengthening that route to the southwest through next week. Bring a lot of dry, warm weather in with it. That gets to midnight on Thursday. We have a system coming into the north, bring a little bit of rain, mostly dry. And quite warm though down in the south. And then the KMA looks like that. So again, high pressure ridging up from the Azores into the south southwest, bringing a lot of dry weather with it. Till we get to about a week out, and then that pressure starts to take over, as it often does, both with the KMA. I think there might be a slight flaw within the model at the moment. No, uh, behind weakens around the 1st of August, low pressure west and south combines turn things cooler 
and more unsettled. Uh, but not for long, the original is all back in again as we approach day ten of those still with another low up to the north. A little bit more changeable, maybe, after about a week out anyway with the K of A. But I've got GFS Big Night Run, which we know in the extended. I'm going to bring some about. Let's see how that happens. So. We have high pressure uh, ridging to west and to the southwest in much of next week, keeping much of southwest dry. Uh, the north will be a little bit more showery. And then that high pressure around and just after day 10 strengthens the southwest and builds in, turning increasingly dry and warm and fine under that area of high pressure as we go from first week into the second week of August. It's actually possibly turning quite hot in the south and in the southwest. Summer is not done with us yet if the GFS midnight run is right. But how does the 6 set look in comparison? Well, again, next week we've got some low pressure coming to the north, bringing showery conditions bare. The south mostly dry under the ridge. We get to the end of next week. That's Friday the 1st of August. High pressure just a little bit more towards the southwest, bringing the wind perhaps slightly more from west to northwest. See, a little bit cooler, a little bit more showery then as well. Day 10 looks like that. High pressure south, um, the pressure up to the north. Then the high trying to build in around the 4th of August, just beyond day 10. But all a little bit more mixed, all a little bit more showery, all a little bit more uh, low pressure uh, dominated there from the first week into the second week of uh, August. We find a ridge of the Azores going up towards Scandinavia. So not quite as dry, fine and hot to be extended with a GFS 6Z compared to the Midnight Rum. Well, if you enjoyed the video, please do like, share and subscribe. Thanks so much everyone for doing that. Drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos and content. And don't forget to tell your friends about guys. Well, please get them to subscribe too. Thanks so much everyone for doing that. Uh, around 60 subscribers will get us to 20.5k. Thank you so much everyone. GM, again with high pressure southwest, low pressure to the northwest on Sunday. Then high pressure extends its way up. A nice extension from the Azores uh, through the early to middle part of next week. But the high then pulls out into the Atlantic and we start to bring in a rather more showery and slightly cooler northerly type flow. But that's a sentiment day 10. A little bit different to the other model output with a uh, area of low pressure in the North Sea and a ridge out to the northwest. So obviously that's a significantly cooler with winds coming in from a northerly direction. And it's rather more unsettled as well with showers or longer spells of rain, particularly uh, towards more eastern regions. And then uh, the ECM rounds it all off again with high pressure to the south and southwest through the middle part of next week. Lower pressure out to the northwest. That's day 9 and 10. High pressure between Iceland and Norway. Low pressure down across France. Winds coming in from the east. So this low could bring some wet weather into more southern regions. And as we move beyond that, heading up uh, from the first week to the second week of August, uh, we keep low pressure to the north, high pressure down, and we keep that sort of westerly type flow going. So it's only really the GFS big night run that's uh, bringing uh, summer back with any conviction, I would say. Otherwise, we're sort of in Patricia and Prince. It's not going to be that bad. You know, it's going to be okay. It's going to be pleasant. Very pleasant spell of weather coming up, I think. Over the next couple of weeks, particularly though, for the south and north, where it's a little bit more showery and changeable. This is a precipitation forecast based on that East Shem run from Tibet.com. So, we have got some heavy showers across East Anglia, South East England today. Uh, otherwise, you know, one or two showery bursts, quite cloudy, but not too bad. Tomorrow and into the weekend, a few showers here and there, particularly so for the north and west, but not a lot going on really over the uh, next few days. Perhaps as we get towards day 10, a hint of something a little bit wetter, a little bit more thundery, uh, possibly developing there in southern southwest regions, although of course that is a long way off. These are the on table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10 for the Icelandic Met Office. It's getting us to the 3rd of August. 16 members of the ECM ensembles with a ridge from the Atlantic going up towards northern Europe. A trough is over France. The wind's coming in from like a northeasterly direction. So, you know, expect a fair amount of dry weather, especially so for the west. Could be a little bit more showery in the north. 13, control 
I mean, Operation Run with that ridge to the uh, north and the west. Low to the south could be bringing up some heavy showers and thunderstorms into southern areas. 12 with high pressure ridging from the Azores into West Europe. Low pressure over Denmark and the wind uh, flowing directly doing something a little bit, a little bit like that. And then uh, 10 with high pressure in the Atlantic going up towards Scandinavia. Quite a deep low over France and southern England. That could bring some very wet weather into the south. Of course, only 10 going in that direction. And that's kind of like similar though to this option, uh, I guess. So if you was to put the 13 together there with a 10, that would be 23. Like that's quite a significant minority, I guess. In two weeks' time... Uh, these are the options that we've got. If it'll flip over for us, will it flip over? Yes, there it is. I guess to the 8th of uh, August. Lot of them, blimey. So we've got 12 members of the East Sea on Sons with high pressure towards the Baltic Sea, high pressure towards southwest of England and Ireland, wind flow direct to something a bit like that. We've got 11 with high pressure building up from the west southwest. We've got 10 with low pressure north, northeast, high pressure out in the Atlantic. Actually, wind flow doing something a bit like that. We've got seven with high pressure out in the Atlantic, lower pressure through here. Six with low pressure to the east, high pressure out to the west, and five with high pressure over top of the country. A lot of options there at two weeks out, telling us there is a lot of uncertainty when we get from the first week into the second week of August. However, you'll notice that really it's only the five here that are going in the same direction as a GFS uh, midnight run and, you know, bringing uh, a proper spell of summer weather. Otherwise, all looking slightly mixed, I think, there. We'll see. Okay, CFS B2, and then we're done. These are 500 millibar height anomalies, and they're broken down into week periods. The first week period takes us from the 24th to the 30th of July, but next week with high pressure to the west and southwest, low pressure to the north and the east, and the wind flow will be doing something a bit like that. Week 2 will be the 31st of July to the 6th of August, with plenty of low pressure to the north, high pressure to the west, wind coming in from a westerly direction, a bit like that. Week 3, three is going to be the 7th to the 13th of August. Uh, now, high pressure more towards uh, Eastern Europe there. Um, so maybe, maybe some, I mean, there's going to be low pressure something, isn't there? Maybe some low pressure through here, a bit speculative. And then, uh, finally, week four looks like that. It's going to be the 14th to the 20th of August. So some northern blocking appear then around Greenland, but also high pressure down towards Spain and the Med. And uh, in between, well, could we bring in some low pressure again? I'll put here a question mark. Oh, looks rather, uh, well, I'm, What's the word? You know, rather patchy, doesn't it, really, when we're going in, into August. I'm still not overly sure the models have got a firm handle on the weather going into August. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what transpires. Will summer come back or uh, will we just turn more mixed? We'll keep you updated. Okay, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please can you like, share, and subscribe. Drop a comment, let us know what you think about this and all of our videos and content. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gals Weathers. And get them to subscribe to you. Thanks so much, everyone, for DMAC. Tomorrow, we're going to, we're going to have a 6 UK weather forecast. Jamie and Friday, and we'll be at 10 to 14 day as well. Keep checking back to the channel for more. For this one, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. And bye for now.